Tam yeah. Azar in the building. Wow. Good Thank morning, you. ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So where are you this morning? Are you still in Atlanta, Georgia? I, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, I'm close to home, but just can't get home. I'm in Greenwood, Louisiana right now. Okay. Okay. So is is louisiana the home or your texas or what that's my home that's my home louisiana yeah, that's my home tell me a little yeah, bit yeah. about tell me a little bit about tam zire from louisiana um well um i'm 40 years old love to travel um always wanted to get into trucking like maybe 10 years ago i had went to the school um and i think at that time they didn't have any type of financial aid you had to like get it um like funded at a with a bank or you had to come out of pocket so when i heard about they what they had grants in my state in my city um i went to apply and surprisingly, I got in, and I was excited. I was so excited. Went to um, trucking school, and I couldn't pass the 90 degree, the back end. So I actually didn't test out there. Um, I actually had to go to another school to get help. Okay, okay. Um, so let's 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 let's, the, let's back. Let's back up a little bit. Let's let's back up a little bit. You mm -hmm. so okay. This this is what. 10 years ago that you got into trucking or that 10 years ago no, they didn't no. have the financial aid they didn't to have help the funding you. yeah oh. they didn't have the they didn't have funding 10 years ago but um i came into trucking last year oh okay. um, i started school in april okay okay yeah, okay but 10 years oh, ago okay. you was interested in trucking i was interested yeah oh okay yeah. okay so unfortunately life happens that it happens, you know. Life happens. You know, we can't get yeah. <laughs> we we can't get away we can't get away or get around with life, man. All right, so back at That's that right. time, but then a blessing, huh? blessing came around. And okay. Mm -hmm. What what was the blessing? Go go ahead. What what was the blessing? The the blessing was like I got I got funded and I was I was in there I was excited, and then the backing part and I couldn't back. Oh, and I had to okay. go get help to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what what you what were you was doing uh, back then before you got into trucking? Um, before I got before I got into trucking, um, I was a um, substitute teacher and I was a, a DSW, um, direct service worker, and professional substitute teacher. Okay. Now, you know, coming up. In the public school, from my myself, I I came across a few uh, substitute teachers myself. You know, when my main teacher wasn't there, and substitute would come in, we would clown them and all like that. But they was cool though. They they was some of them was cool. My, you know, yeah. as I was going to school and being taught how life supposed to work, it it was right. unfortunate that life for you guys was kind of kind of on the cheap like a teacher back then was making yeah. like was making like 30 40 K a year mm. so I mean being that you was a substitute teacher and all like that how how you know mm -hmm. you you went through this you know you went to college and all like that and got your degree in teaching and all like that but when you got into teaching and they was like, well, okay, well, we got you. It's only uh 40, about 30, 40 K for you. How, how did you feel about that after finding out that you, well, you could potentially make more in a job that you really didn't need an education for? Well, actually, um, I went to school for early childhood education. I didn't finish. So that's where the substitute teacher comes in. Um, I'm not, I wasn't a certified teacher, just a professional substitute teacher. So you go and you, um, you take this test. And, well, 
they give you the book you study, you go take the test. And then. So I was saying that um, I wasn't a certified teacher. I was just a professional substitute teacher. Um, so you go and, you know, you you have a book you study, you go take a test, and then you get your little certificate. So you, you are a professional substitute teacher. I said, but actually I did DSW work, which is direct service work. I was a direct service worker. So I think I made more money doing that, like sitting in the home. Um, taking care of elderly people. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So uh, years later, um, how was you? Was you born and raised in Louisiana? Yeah, I definitely was. So definitely you, so you was around doing Katrina. Where where were you uh, when Katrina hit? When Katrina hit, hit, I was probably, well, where I live at is probably like three hours from New Orleans. Two hours, two and a half, something like that. I was from New Orleans. So wasn't too far away from New Orleans, but definitely um, was a bad time for us. Um, I think I, we were shut in in the church. Um, that's what me and my family was. Wow. So, yeah. so you, so you was touched by Katrina that actually forced, uh, forced you guys out of the house into, uh, into the church for shelter. Yeah. Right. How yeah. did, how did you guys, well, let me ask you this, like when it started and when it started to get worse, when, when did it come uh, apparent to you guys that you know we need to we we need to get out and 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 seek shelter before it started. Um, before it started, actually, so uh, we weren't affected by flood waters or anything, but definitely um, electricity being out for for days and yeah, it was it was it was a bad time. And we really didn't know what was going on um, so probably, like, days later, uh, we found out how New Orleans was impacted. Um, yeah, it was just a sad time. So you, so how, how long was you guys uh, at the shelter for? Uh, I would say three days, four days. Really not that, really not that long, but... It seemed, it felt like it was for sure. What was the, um, what was the scene there? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you there with, with, with some other families and all like that. What, what, what was the scene there? I'm, I'm sure it was, well, was it chaotic? Was it calm? No, it was calm. It was calm because, um, I guess because of the place that we were in, you know, we knew, that not only that we had shelter, but we knew that God would, we just believed that God would keep us, you know, and um, it got rough. Um, ran out of um, gasoline for for the generators. It, it, it got rough. It got hot um, at night. It, I mean, it was, it was, it was dark, but I think for the most part, I can't, I can't say that I could complain compared to what others went through, you know, the traumatic experience that others had in, in New Orleans. It wasn't, it wasn't really that bad for us. You know, like somebody, like, you know, when you think you got it bad and then you, com you compare yourself to what, it, it, it wasn't that bad. So I really, I really shouldn't, shouldn't say that it was bad. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's probably the worst hurricane that we went through, you know, in my lifetime, in my lifetime, <laughs> I think Andrew, I think Andrew was bad, but I, I don't remember. I was a kid, so I don't, I don't remember, but I think in, in my lifetime, and like I said, I really can't, I really can't say that. I know what they went through in, in New Orleans. I, I really can't, you know, because, but I do know that if it's anything, um, that kind of like made us have like a backup plan or either 
uh, a backup plan to the backup plan, you know. But it's sometimes you can't prepare. Sometimes you can't prepare enough. Sometimes it's like the unexpected just don't happen, and you just got to, you know, I, deal with it the best that you can. Just got to just gotta rock out with it. Have, have uh, yeah. in, in your yeah. opinion, and I know it's been like way years later, but, you know, some say that, you know, some cities haven't, haven't recovered uh, from Katrina, but ha have you seen any progress since then? Um, in what aspect? Like, uh, people getting, well, people getting their lives back, getting their homes back. Um, we, we already um, know, we already know the amusement park ain't coming back no time soon. <laughs> so, right. So. Uh, you know, I really, I really don't know. I, I just know that a lot of people, uh, were displaced and, um, I actually see, um, I actually saw this morning that there is a, um, documentary on, I think it's HBO called, called Katrina Baby. And I guess how it affected the children, that's all. And I heard this before, and it, and it kind of made sense to me. Um, I think I heard one of my friends, I think she lives in New Orleans, uh, and she practices there. Um, she's one of my Facebook friends, and she was talking about how, you know, those some of those teenagers now, like 17, 18-year-olds, um, or even older, you know, they were babies. They saw a lot, um, a lot of debt, a lot of, because it's a lot of stories that, you know, you'll hear about the things that happened in the Superdome. And so um, it, I think it kind of like did something to, to the, to the, to their minds, you know, and it's like, I think it was just trauma and, so a lot of things that you see happening right now, because I'm from Louisiana, but it's certain places in New Orleans I'm not going. <laughs> um, I, I really, you know, but then that's just me. I don't know. I got gotcha. um, Because it's like, for, um, for essence, you know, you, you saw um, how people, you know, they were parking their cars, their cars. And it's like, I saw a video, it was like seven or eight cars in this one parking lot all the windows were smashed out. They broke into all the cars. And it's like, it's just not New Orleans. I, I think it's just the world we live in now. But um, it's kind of scary, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Scary. So, scary. so after, after a couple of days, what was maybe about three or four days, you guys was able to go back to your homes um what what yeah. was it what was it like uh getting back at home and what was some of the what was some of the stuff you had to do to you know do for a cleanup afterwards because i'm sure without lights all your food or your right you know. yeah yeah like disposing of all all the all the food out your freezers out your, everything out the re uh, refrigerator um cleaning that um i i still think we still stayed out of, out without lights for a while, you know, cause it's like certain places, I guess, have a higher demand. Like say like even to, even like in 2020 when they, when we had this hurricane, my light stayed off for five days. My sister's was on like two days later. She lives, she lives closer to like a hospital or it's like, I guess the, in those areas they work on, you know, they work on and make sure that they come on first. So, um, it's like, um, I, you know, dealing with the heat, it's hot. You know, you, you, pick, you pick your windows up and then the mosquitoes, well, you know, you pick your windows up, but you can, you open the doors, the mosquitoes come. It's like, yeah. Yeah. All right. And tough. Then sometimes you, some, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, and then sometimes, you know, you think, well, I, well, you are leaving, you go to another state and you'll, book rooms there and sometimes um it's already full then you get on the highway and it's like traffic galore so it's like sometimes it's good to to if you're gonna get out just get out early 
just leave and you know do what you have to do all right <sighs> tough or tough times it. man tough times thank you for that story man that's that's uh that, that that was a powerful impact right there man i that, wow i i couldn't have, you know the only the only big thing for us you know being up in the northeast i'm from ohio we 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 had the blackout you know that that was you know maybe the biggest thing for us i mean you know me being from oh, cleveland wow. i mean in my lifetime i haven't experienced any like devastation weather wise i mean we got snow we mm -hmm. you know we we got the snow there's snowstorms and all like that snow uh snow pile snow piled up to your knees and stuff like that but i'm i'm oh, used wow. i'm used to that you know but no hurricanes mm -hmm. no earthquakes you know i i haven't experienced right. uh any of that and you know to see to see what you guys went through down in New Orleans and all like that, and and the pictures that I seen, the the videos, yeah. the the stories and all like that. I mean, it. I I I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine any of that, man. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Yeah. All right. So Tam, man, let's uh let's uh. Let's find out what happened to you on the highway, man. It was <laughs> uh take take us back uh to to what happened in Georgia. So uh I'm assuming you ran out of well, you ran out of hours and you had to end up parking on the 285, man. What what happened? Okay, so I had a load that went to Georgia. Um, I don't remember which what, what part of Georgia. So, um, you know, um, once you go in and you you do your drop and hook, of course you need an empty to come out. Um, you have to leave with an empty because well, my company, our pol the pol their policies are, you know, they don't want us bob tailing um, unless we have permission to. So, why does this company sound like U.S. Express? No, no, uh, no. Oh, okay, no, because I, no, I, I used to, I used to drive for U.S. Express, and they had the same policy. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a. Um, I I heard that it's because you know you most you most more prone to get into um accidents when you when you bomb telling, so that's why they want you. That's what I understand. And then plus some shippers, um, you can't go in if you don't have a if you don't have an empty. So I guess that's just how it works. I don't know. But so I went on. I think I think they sent me to this one place to look for an empty. That was none. I have I had to wait. They sent me to this other place to get the empty. Well, there was actually two spots. There was actually two spots before I came onto that one, and I saw truckers, and I was like, I was like. Ooh, but I was on the I was on the I was in the wrong lane, like, and I couldn't get over to get to park behind him. It was like maybe six trucks, um, at another ramp, and I, but then I had switched highways, um, or interstates, and um, when I got to that one, that was the first time I saw a truck on the side of the road, and I was like, I said, oh, I was like, oh, they look, there's a truck, um, on the side of the road. I wonder if I could just. He was like, well, let me see, and I think I I put it on um. FaceTime and he was like, Oh, I think it should be good because there's other trucks there. So, you know, it, so that's that's how that happened. Yeah, well, it was another truck there. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you should be and, good. You, you should be good while everybody else getting tickets too. No, I'm just playing. Um right, well you <laughs> so you swooped up there. Uh mm -hmm. of course I'm sure throughout the night wasn't wasn't very comfortable. But uh, you you no. you you made it through the night, and of course you know you I opened up your thought, yeah. you know you opened Jeez. up your curtain, and that's when you decided to make that TikTok. Sure, so you know how there's a first time for everything. This was the first time that I slept on the side of the road. This is what the traffic looked like that morning when I woke up. I was about to get out and try to do my future. I'm in Georgia. I'm, I ran out of time. So I literally had to stop and sleep on the side of the road. 
my baby said I would be okay. So I believe I would be okay. But Lord, oh my God. I don't know what time I fell asleep. I don't know how I fell asleep. And I just knew that I woke up and I was okay. TikTok showing where you had to park at night and, uh, and, and with all the other trucks already left. Um, right. Being that you was the only truck there, uh, especially on 285, uh, did a trooper come up to you or no? You you was good to go no. until your time was up. No, I was good to go. And I I think I parked, it was after 1 a.m. So, yeah, no, nah, nobody. And that's my thing. I fear somebody coming, bang, 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 because that's scary. That, you know, I don't like being uh Start or I don't like being waking up by that. I've been I've been woken up by that before, and is um I get a headache and it it takes forever to go away. And I was like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, when yeah. them cops be banging on the door, be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh uh, yeah. But yeah, um, you know, hopefully, well, this is trucking, so you're gonna get into all sorts of situation, but. Right. I mean, I don't know what company you drive for, so I guess I can't give you uh, any advice, you know, because about the company. But I will tell you what I would have done in that situation. I would have okay. pushed it. <laughs> I would have jumped on. Right, yeah. I, I, I would have jumped on personal conveyance and mm -hmm. stayed on that. Until I found somewhere that I was comfortable and safe at. That's I was so tired. Yeah, oh, yeah, God. exactly. See, that's another thing too, you know. So mm -hmm. that's another thing too. So that, but that's what I would have did. I, I, I would have. Yeah. I would have pushed it until you know I, I, I found somewhere that that was comfortable to me. I mean, different right. companies, you know, different companies does pc in different ways and like i said it's, it's been plenty of times that i i was you know on the road or something like that but i pushed it farther wow. enough to be like if i'm if i'm going to shut down on the road i am going to see if i can find a dirt lot or you oh, know wow. or or probably a rest area that i could push it but you being mm -hmm. in but you being in the mid in in mid Atlanta, yeah, there there, there wasn't right. no rest areas around. But uh, um, but, but next then, time, but then like, I found out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Then I found out there was a drop lot that my company um we delivered to, and I didn't know that we could sleep there. But I know now that if I'm ever in 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 the Atlanta area. That I could go to that drop lot and I can go sleep over there. That's what's so up. That's that's good news. <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, ever. Tam, listen. I don't know if you have this app on your phone, but download Trucker's, Trucker's Path. Path. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Download Trucker's Path because Trucker's Trucker's Path would would help you uh, find you know some parking in your area i mean it, it pings yeah. it pings every dirt lot every walmart every mom and pop every restaurant that has truck parking right. you know so mm -hmm. l hopefully with truckers path you know you you'll be able to find you you'll be able mm -hmm. to find uh parking i have truckers path i have truckers path but you know, when I'm driving, you know, th there's also the camera that's in my face. So I can't, it's like. Right. You can't have your phone touch. in your hand so, while, you're, so, while you're driving. Yeah. So, so my baby has struck a pet. That's what, that's what, and it was like so many people had so much to say. ugly things to say. But at the same time, he's a trucker too. He still got to worry about his own clock. He still got to worry about what he getting to. He still, and it was once I'm in the morning and. He he stayed up and made sure that I I made it safe. He was looking for places for me. Every everything was full. It it kept saying that everything was full. It did say that that Walmart though, um, had allowed parking, and that's why oh, he said, oh, "Okay, you might have okay, to go back okay, to that okay." Walmart. 
So that was the that thing. that was a, but, that um, would be a first if that's the if that if they allowed mm -hmm. it that. That's what it said, and so that's what's good about Chuckers Pad also because um, it'll tell you which WalMarts allow and won't allow parking. All right, okay. Tam Zar. What what is it? Tam Zar Zire Zar Tam Zar? Tam First year in trucking. So the company that you uh the company that you driving for was it uh was it the first company on your list that you that you chose to drive for or did you do your research and broke it down? Well, um, national carriers. Um, I had thought about, and then I had a friend that works for this company. Um, and he said, "Oh, Tam, um." You know how many uh reefers I see on the side of the road? They 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 on fire. You don't want to do that. You ain't gonna be able to sleep. Um, because it makes so much noise. And um, so I kind of got discouraged with that. And I was like, okay, well, wow. then mm, it was just like, no, I, it probably wasn't the first, <laughs> the first, but okay. I I had another friend that that I had went to school with. He had came here too. So it was like, I knew people here. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll try that. But, all right. Um, all right. You being comfortable in the, uh, in, in the place that you're at female driver out here. Um, before we get on up out of here, Tam, I usually like to ask this particular question. Like a lot of, a lot of females is coming into this industry now is, and it's trying to make it there you know, make it their own. What do you what what do you have for you, your experience so far out here? You say about eight months or so. How has it been for you so far out here as a female driver? Uh well <laughs> not quite eight months, but so a little less than that. But I would say um, keep your eyes open. Be vigilant. Um, be careful. Um, always have um, something to protect yourself. Because I was at a rest area about two months ago, and somebody put an air tag on my truck. Um, um, I was at this truck stop in in Dallas a um, few days ago, and um, somebody put a sticker on my truck and me not knowing I touched it. It was something on the sticker. It, it felt, it made my hands feel like, um, some, somebody had gave me a shot, like, or stung or like a bee had stung me. And I was like, oh my God, like what's going on? And then I was like, let me get out of here. So I lit. I was bobtail. So I'm um, looking for trailers. Um, had to wait till six o'clock in the morning till this place opened to get to get a trailer because it's like it's just crazy. So oh, hold yeah, on, um, hold, hold on, hold on, back up. Where where were you in Dallas when when that happened? I was at a um, I want to say it was a pilot. And you, so where where was the sticker on on the door handle? No, it was on my window, and it, I couldn't see it because it was so high on the window. I couldn't see it. And it said, but when I took a, so I took a picture of it to show um, my bait. I was like, look what's on my window. Because um, the shipper that I went to, they sent me to the shipper to go look for a, tra um, um, a trailer. They had closed. And so there was a security guard that said, come back um, at 6 a.m. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, well, I see other trucks park here. Can I park here? It was like, um, right across from it and he was like yeah sure so i was like well I, I started looking on um i think it was truck truckers um truckers path, path. instead of, yeah there's there's truckers pet but it wasn't truckers pet it was the other one um oh, okay. truckers map okay no truck map it's called truck map so i was looking on truck map and i was like oh i'm like eight minutes away from a um i, I want to say it was a pilot um and i was like well let me go do some laundry. Let me go take a shower. So, um, I can't when I, so I took my shower, but I had put my clothes to wash first, took a shower, came out and I'm waiting for it to dry. Um, by the time it finished drying, it probably was like 11, 
maybe like maybe like after 11 p.m but you know i i so you get so so you came back to the truck to notice that there was, was a, a sticker mm -hmm. on your truck and you went to go pull it truck. and you went to go pull it off and it stung you i didn't feel it right then and there and then i i saw so i got it and i i sat in the truck and then when i looked at the picture that i had taken of it it looked like that sticker was put on that sticker was like used you know how if i put a sticker on something it will lay flat and but if if i take it off and put it on something else you could see how it was peeled off of something else because the edges is kind of like so it looked like that sticker was on something on, on put on something else and they just put it on my truck so <laughs> so so after so how long did how long after that you took the sticker off did you start to feel the effects and what um, what type of what what type of situation that you did the 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 rectify? Did you go to the hospital afterwards or? Um, no, I I called my friend and she was like, "Oh Tam, wash your hands, wash your hands." And so I I hurry up and wash my hands. And no, my my hands still felt that way yesterday. That happened that happened day before yesterday. Um, my hands were still feeling that way yesterday. Uh, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like going away, but it, it just feel like something stung my hand. And then I actually have a, a little, um, it's not too much of a circle, but it's around and it looked like it's burned. It looked like it's a burn nah, spot. You, on my, you on might want to, you, you might pinky. want to get that looked at if all that's going I on. I feel okay. I feel okay. Nah, it's just, it's just you, finger, you, but, you yeah, might want to. Yeah, when you get home, you you definitely might want to get that looked at. Um, because so, you know you can so crazy. you can you know just like with anthrax, you know the the threat mm -hmm. of anthrax back in the day and all that white powder mm -hmm. that you they they be sending and all like that and putting on stuff, man. Yeah, you you might want to get that. Um, look yeah. at you. Also mentioned about the air tag. Like where where did I you I got a message. Okay. I never found it. I, I never found it, but I but I did go to the terminal and they did check out my truck and then um they found it or they didn't tell me if they found they didn't tell me if they found it or nothing, but it's not it's not popping up no more. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. All I know yeah. is I just have to I just had to find a better way to protect myself. So yeah, you because ladies see a lot of a, a lot certain. of a lot of the ladies out here that gets into this industry, you know, and I I see a lot of I, I see a lot of you guys on TikTok just TikToking away. But um but uh it's you know for me it's all about your safety, man. I mean I I, right. I pray that so you like, guys be you know be visual, be mindful, you know, of where you right. at or what's going on. And if, and for the ones that does the alternative TikToks is what I call them now. You know they, you know they do the booty shaking and uh, and the TikTok dances yeah. and all like that. Be mindful of that because people that are watching you and they and they see right. you and you walk they walk up to you to give you the attention that you so I mean so badly yeah. looking for on TikTok, but they give it to you in the real world. Don't. Feel some kind of way about that. I'm just saying. Um, right. But Tam, definitely um, stay vigilant out there. Uh, hopefully you don't have to. Hopefully you don't have to park at latex gloves. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you don't have to park <laughs> on the side of the road no more. Or being in it. Oh no. Being in that situation. But definitely when you get home, uh, definitely stop at a at at the hospital or an emergency care. And definitely get that looked at, man, because I mean that you you may not feel nothing now, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, it probably lay dormant and then pop up later. Right. So you might want to definitely get right. that looked at. Yeah. Yeah. All definitely. Right. All right, guys. The best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If you guys want to jump on, y'all know what to do. 216-600-2090. Thank you very much, Tam, for coming on to the show and rocking You're out welcome. with your boy. You're welcome. And uh, until right. next time, everybody, y'all take it easy and we'll talk to y'all later. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like a G, you don't make a sound And I want you to miss me when I'm 